to attack Iran? No. Become allies with Iran. Become friends I mean, with Iran. No. Make Iran Iran's so not going to be friends cool. with us. They don't want to be. I think they, they don't want to be westernized. The, the whole Iranian revolution was a result of them choosing to reject westernization. U.S. continues barrage of missile strikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen. Oh my god. Have you seen this? We're totally bombing the shit out of these guys. These uh, Houthis, not cool guys, very bad guys in fact, are uh, attacking the one thing that you shouldn't attack, and that's international trade. Oh well, yeah, and they've been kind of a, um, a global pain in the ass for years. Yes, they have. They've been they, at it for uh, a very long time. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've been bombing like Saudi oil facilities and whatnot mm -hmm. since like 2017. Mm -hmm. And generally, like, generally, when you think of like terrorists, right, you think of people that like they they attack civilian locations that are well populated and they're trying to take lives and and whatnot. These guys do it economically. Yeah, maritime like, traffic. They, yeah, yeah, they they take out ships in the Red Sea, uh, which they're in a very ad advantageous position geographically to do, and then they launch missiles at oil fields mm -hmm. <laughs> not good uh, at all yeah that's the thing that's going to get you stomped on honestly cynically as this might sound if they were oppressing uh, the people in their country uh, we wouldn't pay as much attention to them oh yeah but I if mean, they are that's, their, that's that country's problem but now yeah. when they make themselves a problem for everybody else mm -hmm. now it is everybody else's problem yeah and yeah they're going after economic targets like you said um, the <clears throat> thing I am bothered by about this is that they are funded by Iran, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. If, perhaps, follow me here, we were friendly with Iran, if they were more of our ally, maybe they wouldn't be uh, funding them. Uh, it, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Iran that uh, originally made, made, or rather that originally uh, soured relationships with most Western nations. Mm. Um, they used right. to be actually fairly westernized Right. Um, it wasn't until uh, Ayatollah Khomeini came around and he brought a very radical form of Islam mm -hmm. with him and instituted it and then stopped being friendly with all the Western nations because he believed that they were corrupting the people of Iran. Didn't we put him in charge? Wasn't that the whole issue with our CIA? We backed him and not the other people? I'm not sure about that one. I think, I could be wrong on this, but I think that that was the, the issue, is that we backed, our CIA backed uh, Khomeini and wanted him in charge because he was we thought he was going to sell us the oil. Again, this was back in the 60s. This was a very long time ago, or 70s. Um, we keep goofing this up. We keep meddling in there and doing things I mean, wrong. it certainly wouldn't be the first time, if, if that's correct. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first or the last time that we've installed somebody. That, then uh, turns around. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. And we should quit doing that. What we need, I'm going to suggest, is above board, in front of everybody, diplomacy, which we had. It was the Iran deal, but it had Obama's name on it, so it had to be destroyed. <laughs> and I've talked to you about this Iran deal before. I think it was the a very big and important good piece of diplomacy. It was open to the public. Everybody saw what was in it, and it made... Uh, it got us a few steps closer. It didn't make Iran our complete and total uh, ride-or-die ally, but it increased our... It got us closer to being allies with them. And um, if Donald Trump had not destroyed it, thrown it out, we would be closer to them, and we would have some sort of leverage. We would have some sort of allyship with them to say, hey, don't fund the Houthis. And maybe they wouldn't. Well, I don't know about that. I think that the deal could have been okay. Um, but there were at least a few too many concessions given in the deal. For one, a three-week notice before we could inspect any facilities, uh, and then we gave them a lot right off the bat. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you signed the deal. I think we gave them what was it? One point or how many billions of dollars was it again? That it was, we gave them. It was I, it was several billion dollars that we didn't give yeah. them. It was theirs. Well, we we released it from uh, holding from the sanctions. Right, right. They put it in a bank it was theirs we told the bank if you want to do business with the america you will freeze this and do not let them access it and that bank said oh, okay yeah america's a better customer than iran is so they just held it uh, we had the bank release them their money uh, so it's not like it came out of taxpayer dollars 
And well, either way, what I'm I, what I'm reading okay. here is that we actually didn't back um, Ayatollah Khomeini. I uh, know. Okay, is that no, a we we backed his opponent actually? Oh, okay. Okay. And he took over anyway. Oh well, that's not good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we okay. were in contact with him, but we were we were against him. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. So we're, now we're bombing him, and I, I I still would rather be allies with these people. I think that if we had given them all that money, if we had given those concessions that you were talking about, if we gave them all this stuff, then what we can do possibly is when the Houthis start acting up, we can ask them, hey, stop funding them. And I think we would have grounds on which to do so. And they would weigh that cost benefit analysis. They're a real country. They have actual people in charge. They have, they're not a military dictatorship. They're a, like a legit country with a middle class, a, a working class, a military class. They have all the stuff of a regular country. They have language, culture, borders. They have all the parts of a country. They are a real country. And they would weigh that cost benefit analysis. They would say, hey, we, we could lose things that uh, America gave us, or they could uh, go back on their deal if we fund these people, and maybe they wouldn't. That's how diplomacy is supposed to work. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I think that they are also very um, ideologically uh, oriented, right? So their leaders are. I don't think they're. I've been reading about their middle class isn't. The well, right. regular people I mean, they, are fine with America. It's, the Iranian Revolution only only took place like 42 years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. 45 years ago, something. It was in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. So yeah, I mean, they're back then they were fairly westernized, like I said. Mm -hmm. uh, but so you know you wouldn't expect that a lot of people would or you you would expect that you know a lot of those people are still around right yeah and we should work to further westernize them i think that's a great thing i think it's well, a great sure. idea but that's kind of their their uh fight right not ours oh, of course it is ours we we can entice them to do so we can become trade partners with them we can give them um, diplomacy diplomacy is a two-way street we can suggest to them hey this benefits you come up with something that they want and something that uh helps us and then we won't have to do this houthi nonsense they would dry up they wouldn't have the the money to buy missiles anymore and i think that would I think be that's optimistic super cool that's how to guess diplomacy is optimistic <laughs> hey let's meet and then come to an agreement and then make everybody better that's, yeah i'm just that's optimistic optimist on yeah. these kind of uh relations okay unfortunately I, th I also think that their ties with russia are stronger than our ties would have been even with that deal and what are they what are, what is that tie it is an economic diplomatic tie make ours a military better make ours better make ours more enticing cost make them do a cost benefit analysis and say we benefit more from being allies with america than russia and i think they'll take it because they're a real country your, your your North Korea wouldn't do that, you know. I uh, North Korea's I mean, not North a real Korea's country. A real country too. Nah, eh, not really. Uh, <laughs> it it has a a lot of issues, and I think that it has more ideology than pragmatism. Would you agree with that? Uh, North Korea has more ideology than pragmatism. Sure, uh, but I think Iran has the same problem. Mm, I think they're a little bit higher on the pragmatism than ideology. I think you're right. They have a lot of ideology, but I'm willing to bet it's 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 more in the 60-40 range of pragmatism versus ideology, where uh, I think North Korea is 70% ideology, 30% pragmatism. Well, you also have to remember, they have literal terrorist organizations that they're state sponsoring, like in their country in Iran. Right? Yes, because like, that benefits them. They're not doing it for fun. They're doing it because they get something out of it. And if they got more from America than they did from those terrorist organizations, they would abandon them. Or maybe they'll do both. But it, probably both. hopefully they would get <laughs> they would appreciate all of the things that they're getting from America. And we could then pressure them to abandon that thing that they're doing. That's, that's just basic diplomacy, you know, like, hey, we're friends. We gave you this. You gave us that. We're in trade relations. We're being good and right and polite. Can you stop doing that? Yeah, you're right. Why not both? <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, the the war continues. Do we think it's going to lead to bigger conflict? Um, possibly. Uh, if it if it keeps going on the way it is, somebody's going to mess up. I thought it was going to escalate uh, a few weeks ago when um, somebody's leaders got taken out, and I forget who it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the tensions there are 
sky high right now, and all it's all we're waiting for is that one spark that lights the powder keg over there. And I think you're gonna see war in at least a few countries over there. Mm. <laughs> I'm hoping we won't get involved uh, as much as we have previously. Uh, it who knows? Yeah, it depends on who you ask. What uh, CNN's banging the war drums? Here we go. Um... Ever. Um, all of the significant weaponry that uh, as long as we don't uh, put are provided again. comes from Iran. I'm fine. All of their weapons comes from Iran. And here's a, a retired general on CNN talking about that we may need to destroy the Houthis, means of power projection. So, as usual, the uh, the Communist News Network uh, is out there pushing for war. <laughs> it's, it's it's good for ratings on CNN. They love missiles firing and blasting on things, explosions. So they do what I suggest they all, what I think they always do is that they go and they find all these retired generals who want to be on TV. They bring them on TV and then they talk about how we need to blow them up and uh, wreck them and uh, where their guns are coming from and all the retaliatory measures that we have to take. That's not fun. I don't like that. Yeah. The, uh, I think, I mean, it all started with the uh, Hamas attack on Israel uh, a couple of months ago and yeah. now it's escalating everywhere. Well, yeah, that's the so, yeah, that's the reasoning that the Houthis are, are justifying their actions. They're they would do this anyway. It wouldn't matter. Uh, what's the well, they alternative? have been doing it. They've been attacking stuff from the Red Sea. For They've been attacking things now. for years. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not a new thing. Uh, Chat asks, what's the alternative to U.S. attacking the Houthis? Um, I would I would suggest that we let Australia attack the Houthis. No, nobody attack the Houthis. Dry up their revenue stream. They're being paid and funded by Iran. If we were allies with Iran, Iran wouldn't pay them, possibly. Diplo more diplomacy, not more bombs. So attack Iran? No. Become allies with Iran. Become friends with Iran. I mean, Iran. no. Make Iran Iran's so not going to be friends cool. with us. They don't want to be. I think they They could. don't want to be westernized. The, the whole Iranian revolution uh, was a result of them choosing to reject westernization. They, the whole idea of the the Houthis being backed by Iran is because they're because Iran leads what's what they call an axis of resistance against against the West. They are ideologically inclined to not work with us. They will never be friends with us. They are ideologically adversarial in like they entered by that the, the nature of their they country. entered that deal that Obama made. They entered it willingly and yeah, were and keeping up with friends it. With them. No, that's step one. You, I'm currently not best friends with this chatter because I don't know who it is. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate you. But we, we don't know each other in real life. Over time, if he came in every day and chatted all the time and then joined the stuff and then <laughs> uh, uh, went to the Discord and then chatted all the time, and step, 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 step towards being best friends. So step one is open. It was the Iran deal that we had. I think that could have been a first step towards being allies with them. And if you don't take that first step, nothing ever happens. We will continuously be adversaries for eternity. I would, I would like that to not be true. I would, I would like to take steps towards becoming friends. Um, I, it's very, like I said, it's optimistic. This is like yes. some kumbaya stuff, you know? Yes, I it mean, is. That's, I'm sorry. That's literally liberal diplomacy it's it's liberal uh, ideology it really is become economic friends with these people give them a reason to work with you give them a reason to deal with you in a fair way and if they're not fair then you cut them off if they are then you give them more benefits you give them a, give them friendship and then maybe they won't fund the houthis uh yeah we could have allowed our way out of world war ii sometimes diplomacy works sometimes it's just appeasement i know it's it's a difficult game uh yeah, i agree exactly it, you, you... I would definitely view Iran as uh, an, an an analogy there, or as analogous to giving Hitler a bunch of stuff, right? I mean, he was always going to go to war to retake, at the very least, retake the stuff that was lost in the, um, or the Versailles Pact or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, the Treaty of Versailles, thank you. Yeah, they the Germany lost like a whole bunch of land in the Treaty of Versailles. And Hitler was always going to attack and start a war to, at the very least, reclaim that land. And then it turned into attacking all of Europe. Uh, because, of course, Europe retaliated when he did that, uh, as you would expect. 
Right. Um, he, was, but, he was taking land. <clears throat> the, the appeasement of Hitler was letting him have somebody else's country. Uh, I don't think yeah. that's what Iran is doing at the moment. The Houthis are hitting economic targets for economic reasons, and Iran is backing them because they benefit economically. That's a lot different than stealing other people's land. That is a, I think, issue that we could somehow work out a deal with them to benefit them more economically than backing the Houthis. If they have two options that make them money, backing the Houthis makes them X amount, becoming allies with America gives them twice that amount. I think they would take it. I doubt it. I think they're too ideologically inclined to um, okay. to cease what they're doing regardless of what we give them. And that is okay. We, we, we're we pontificating about the uh, future. Uh, appeasement of Iran is uh, letting them get nukes. Uh, they see the board. Here's, here's why Iran wants nuclear weapons. That's the big kids table. The people at the UN who have nuclear weapons get treated better. That is the, it's not a, a game I'm happy about, but if you lay the, the globe out as a game board, as a board game, uh, like Risk, the people with nukes get more benefits, they get treated seriously, they get to be more important. And they recognize that, I recognize that. They see well, yes, it too. We don't want them to get more important. The, the thing is, they that, want that, to be that more same important. game board mm -hmm. is their their ultimate goal being a theocracy mm -hmm. is eventually to go for that religious victory, right? It's like civilization's religious victory. Everybody follows your religion and whatnot. That's what they're going for, mm -hmm. right? That's what they want. So whatever they can do that will further that is what they're going to do. If that means that they fund terrorist organizations and whatnot, uh, they're going to. The the goal is the world follows Islam. And the reason I'm going to argue about that is because you've already said that the Houthis are doing economic work, right? The Houthis are hitting economic yep. targets, which makes me they are. which suggests to me that the idea of their religious thing is a cover. It's not quite their real goal. Their real goal is money. Their real goal is market domination because that's why they're backing the Houthis and telling them to hit economic things. We could liberalize them and give them ways to make money that aren't terrible and uh, awful to us. They would become liberalized from the inside out. That well, horrible I'm saying, I'm liberal you, tendrils would strangle, they would strangle that uh, uh, religious fervor that you're talking about. They've, they've been liberalized before. The, and then the radical uh, elements uh, in Khomeini came out and they, uh, they rolled back all of that progressiveness they, they had achieved. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you're right. They were a little bit liberalized, then they uh, uh, fought against it. But I, I would keep seeding them and poisoning them with the liberalism. I would. They use that <laughs> at this point as fuel for additional hatred against the West. <laughs> right. Like, right. It's yes, they attempt, do. So we have to very keep, attempts. So we have to keep trying. push them further away from us. So the only answer is forever uh, enemies. Uh, possibly, yeah. I mean, especially given it's their, uh, they have a very adversarial relationship with Western ideals in the first place. I don't, I don't think we're compatible. I don't love that idea. I would rather try to become allies at some point. But that's again, yeah, my optimism. Yeah, I would rather work towards becoming friends even if it fails a hundred times maybe one of the hundred and first we'll accomplish something rather than just accept that we are forever enemies and we will always be uh, antagonistic towards each other and i see your point though if i read any of the iran political leaders writings the political leaders in iran are different than the people if you have watched the things that have been going on in iran for the past couple of years the people don't completely agree with what their leaders are saying. Their leaders are, just as Thomas has described, very re religiously uh, indoctrinated. They want what Thomas described as everybody in the world being Muslim. That's what they want. They're their specific brand. The people don't like that, though. The people, there was that um, that, late, that uh, woman that got uh, accidentally killed by the morality police, and there was a huge backlash to that because the people don't agree with those leaders and i think that's where we see that liberalism those people throw their leaders out or get new ones and abandon the morality police abandon the forced religion 
and stuff like that. And then we get better leaders, hopefully. I mean, that is kind of on them to do, though. And I yes, do think that the people are responsible for the leaders they, they allow to be in control. Yeah, I haven't seen... No, not political assassinations, uh, but don't let them be in charge anymore. Build a new government. Uprisings, possibly. They had giant protests. Not, it was only a couple of years ago where they were doing gigantic protests over this woman who got killed by the morality police. She didn't have her headscarf on the right way, and then they took her to the secret police base, and she gave them some sass, and they hit her in the head, and she died. This is this is not a good thing. Uh, we Nobody likes the morality police. Yeah. Bog is correct again. The, it would legit. It would take. A, it would require a legitimate revolution. Yeah, I think wrong. you're right. It would require a revolution. I think you're right. But I would, I would somehow love for America to back that or help that or nudge it along in a Are diplomatic. Are we just talking way. about how we should stop doing those things? Well, and trying to install leaders and we're not installing them. We're, <laughs> we're helping them. You're right. And the CIA only knows how to do it in one way. I would, I would want the people to, to do that, but the CIA only knows how to do it from the maximum regime change situation. So we need the CIA to back them, but not run them, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, not good. You're right. Yeah, the, the, the CIA would be uh, helping them, backing the rebels. So maybe we... Econ- That's like when we... Uh... How do we economically incentivize the people to do a full-on res- revolution without actually taking over and, and telling them how to do it or arming them. I'm just saying it's, it sounds a lot like, uh, you know, giving bin Laden lots of weapons so that he can uh, help fight off the Russians. And then what did he do 10 years later? Right. Mm. So diplomacy never works. I'm not sure. It I'm... can work when you're working with rational actors and rational governments. I don't think they are. Mm. If, well, if those people don't want to be under this uh, regime any longer, and they would like to ha- change their leaders, how should they do? It? Just completely without us? Yeah, if they if they like what they're dealing with right now, mm-hmm. then it is their prerogative to allow it to continue. Mm-hmm. And if it gets to a point where they decide they don't like that anymore, then it is also their prerogative to overthrow their government. I don't think it's our prerogative to make it's, that happen. We shouldn't incentivize to them. People. Mm. We shouldn't incentivize uh, them to overthrow the I government. mean, and not only that, but these people want to live the way that they're living. Like I said, um, you, just, you just have to see how quickly the Taliban took over in Afghanistan. As soon as we left, it was like, oh, all right, Afghanistan is back to religious orthodoxy. That's because they, they don't want the Western stuff. They don't want the... They don't want the female empowerment that the West brings. They don't want uh, all of the different, more liberalized ideas. They're not about it. And yeah. I from mean, from the religious standpoint, I, I can see that. But I think they would appreciate a, a, a better economy. They would appreciate being part of Western markets. The, if you want to get on the international market, you really have two choices. You really have two choices. You have the Western, backed by America, or you have the china russia uh, side well we do lots of economic shit with china too but if you want if iran wanted to be on the air buy something on the international market they have the west or have, they have the china russia options those are the only two choices and i would prefer that they were friends with us and they participated in our markets and then we could tell them not to do terrorism <laughs> or or cut them off with these sanctions like uh, inappropriate and Innuendo has suggested America is using the stick right now with Iran with all the sanctions. Are you suggesting we do less of those sanctions? And Islam actually has some pretty hardcore baked in anti-capitalist, anti-free trade ideas. Hmm. I don't know about that. Okay. The, maybe they do. Maybe uh, you guys are right that they have, they are, like Thomas said, they don't want to be liberalized. Hmm. And doing business with the West necessitates that you end up interacting with a lot of Western culture and art and whatnot as mm-hmm. well. Which they may as may they may just as well see as that as a disincentive to working with us. Mm. Same, I mean, it's the same way that China interacts with us. Yes, but I mean, they censor the shit out of everything that goes into that country, right? I mean, Iran would be the same way. Sure. And do they not have dissidents within their country trying to undo that? Um, some somewhat they do. In you mean in China? Yeah. Yeah, somewhat they do, but definitely not nearly enough. They're, you're always going to have dissidents. You have dissidents against the United States in the United States. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is what it is, but 
Okay, so but we don't want to empower the dissidents. We don't want to force them uh, to change their regime and stuff like that. We, um, I want to somehow figure out a way to uh, economically suggest to them that that would be better. The, the people like iPhones, but the mullahs don't like iPhones. I, I can agree with that. And hopefully that idea right there, that the people love iPhones and the mullahs don't love iPhones, would lead to them eventually abandoning that form of government, either through uh, elections or uh, a full-on revolution. But we wouldn't want to, I think you're right, we wouldn't want to feed them. We wouldn't want to arm them. That does not work out well for us. Yeah, typically that, that doesn't go great. And whoever we back is probably going to be ideologically motivated in their own way, which also might not align with our very rosy ambitions for what we want them to be. So they're going to be what they're going to be. Mm-hmm. And I think we just have to leave them to their devices. But in the meantime, you know, what they are is our adversary, which means that, yes, we do have to take actions against them. We do have to make sure that we're preventing them from achieving uh, nuclear weaponry. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, you're probably right. We shouldn't allow them at the moment to have it. But if they, what if we laid out the steps, you know, to becoming a real country? towards that. They want it. They're either going to get it through the proper steps that we lay out for them, or they're going to get it clandestinely. Is that a word? Clandestinely? The way all the other countries did. And I mean, the step step one to becoming a real country is to not be a theocracy, which is never... I don't think it's going to happen. Which can't happen to them? So. Okay. Hmm. You might be right on that one, then. If step one is don't be a theocracy, they cannot clear step one. Okay. That's a, a thought I hadn't thought about before. As much as I do dislike organized religion, email Waldo's in chat. I hadn't thought about that before. Okay. Uh, so there's a risk of using economic incentives. If it becomes clear you're using our economic incentives, the religious extremists can always point to it and say you're screaming the Jews and put them to your efforts. Yeah, you're right. Pog 42. Well, that's uh, what I, I was think telling you earlier. Yeah, well, that's what I didn't, uh, Thomas I didn't specify is Jews, as well. but yeah, yeah. you know, you, you give that economic incentive and then they, they can point at you and be like you're the reason that your life sucks or or the americans are the reason that your life sucks to their mm -hmm. people is what they'll say mm -hmm. right so and at that point we lose the the argument oh hi thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video the algorithm loves it when you watch it all the way to the end of the video uh, if you want to keep the algorithm happy and i know you do press the subscribe button press the thumbs up button leave a comment Tell me what you're thinking, tell me what you're feeling, and let's all keep that algorithm happy. Thanks, have a good day.